What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are back with career mode, this time for the Italian Grand Prix. And if I tell you, if this was season one, I would definitely not be looking forward to this racetrack. But given the recent success we've had with the upgrades, um, I'm actually really looking forward to this place. We've essentially turned our McLaren, which you know had the biggest weakness of straight line speed. It's turned into a real strength for us today. And now um, I hope that we're going to be real competitive at this uh, Italian Grand Prix. So heading into Friday practice, Unfortunately, from the last episode, the um, I think it was the front downforce upgrade that was scheduled to go on the car for this race, it's failed. But um, in all honesty, I really don't care because, you know, Monza is probably the, the place where you probably need downforce the least. And, you know, given the, the success of all the upgrade parts that have gone on the car so far this season, I think we can afford to have um, this upgrade fail as long as it means that the future upgrades will um, pass for us. So uh, we're going to have to spend another 400 points and um, we'll do that now so we can get that upgrade on the car ready for the Singapore Grand Prix in the next episode. That is definitely going to be a crucial place to have some front downforce go on the car. So really looking forward to that racetrack as well, which should really uh, suit the McLaren down to a T. In terms of the... Um, you know, power units, we're, we're getting quite thin now in terms of how many we've got left. I think our sixth power unit is our last fresh one left. So we're going to be really, really tight in terms of making all these power units last to the end of the season. Qualifying is about to start here at the Autodromo di Monza for the Italian Grand Prix. The teams are about to head out onto the track any minute now. All right then, chaps, here we go for qualifying for the Italian Grand Prix. I'm um, not too sure if you guys saw it or not, but we got P5 in practice one. We were on the super soft tyres, of course, but um, hopefully um, in this episode we can get ourselves out of Q1, something we didn't manage to do at Spa in the last episode. So I've taken your feedback on board once again. I've got to set laps right at the end of the session and make sure I don't fast forward to the end. Um, it still seems to be a bit of a thing where the AI just pluck a time out of nowhere and... Um, you go tumbling down the order. We're not going to fall into that trap today. But first lap is done. We come across the line. It's P7. 22-3 uh, um, was the time. And it's okay. Not too bad. We're running with a uh, really skinny downforce. I think it's like 4-3. Um, I might have even might have even gone a little bit lower. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. But um, this is kind of a race setup. Just kind of like we did in Spa. Um, I want to set myself up to be really fast in a straight line, really to promote some overtaking. It must be said as well, I have followed some cars in Friday practice, and the car was unstable as hell. It, it was it was not nice to uh, to deal with. But hopefully with heavy fuel, we can be okay. It can make the stability a bit, a bit better, but we'll just have to wait and see how that goes in the race. We're going really aggressive because we're still you know, lacking um, the overall car performance. That's why we just have to go aggressive all the time until we get to a point where the car is, you know, at a very comparable level with the front runners. It's 13th place in qualifying one. Not too bad. Um, we were originally like P10 when we set that last lap at the end of the session. So again, the AI found a couple of tenths and a couple of positions right at the death there. But um, it was fine for us to squeak through. Um, Alonso unfortunately perished um, seven tenths slower than I am. So again, Alonso not really living up to his potential. And again, I think that just further backs up the point that he might not be getting the engine upgrades like I have been suspecting over the last couple of weeks and like a lot of people on the forums have been talking about as well. So um, there was absolutely no way Fernando was going to be competitive at a track like this. But qualifying two now, uh, we went out on a used set of super soft tyres, uh, got us P11. It was a pretty solid lap. We're going to go again now on some softs and see if this set of tyres can get us through to qualifying three, possibly, and really give us some uh, flexibility in terms of uh, our race strategy. But so far, we're up by just over a tenth. As we go through the final corner, that is not the kind of improvement we want to see. I mean, it might just squeeze us into the ten, but um, given how strong the AI are, I think they'd knock me out again anyway. So it was, a, it was a wasted effort. Decided to pull the pin, come back to the pits. We'll put on another set of supers, a fresh set this time. And we'll see what we can do uh, in terms of making it into qualifying three now. One minute to go. Um, I didn't get the timing right in terms of rejoining for this final run. So I decided to let a few guys go. I uh, wanted the track to get a little bit faster. Uh, track evolution is a huge thing in the F1 games and F1 in general. The longer you wait, the more rubber that gets laid down by your competitive uh, competitors. And that just means that, you know, the track is going to be faster and you can have a higher chance of getting through to the next session. We decided to tag on to the back of Esteban Ocon, I think it was, on the start finish straight. Hopefully we can stay with him and he can give us a massive slipstream in the second and third sectors and really 
kind of pole vault us into the qualifying three, as it were. But first chicane was okay. We got a decent exit. It was a lot better than our first uh, flying lap that we did. So hopefully, as we go through the middle sector, we can find a couple more sands. We're in the slipstream of Ocon. It, we're just faintly getting some slipstream from Ocon. You can see the delta was improving there through the first and so the second chicane. Sorry. Um, again, we're only just green, so it's it's an okay lap. But at this stage, it's not going to get us through to Q3. We need to get closer to Ocon to you know really maximise that straight line speed or that you know the the slipstream as it were. But yeah, going through the uh, Lesmos 1 and 2, picked up almost two tenths through there. So that was a really nice run through to Ascari now. Don't cut the inside, really easy to run wide and slide off the corner if you push too hard. We managed to nail it there. Two tenths up, maybe, wow. Look at the delta. It just went from a tenth and a half up to almost four tenths now as we approach the final corner. That was a perfect run through Ascari and now through Parabolica, nice and tidy through there in fifth gear. I think we short shifted a little too early there in a six. But across the line, it's almost going to be an improvement by 5 tenths. Does it get us through to Q3, though? I'm not entirely sure that Force Indy was very close as well. It's only 11th place. So it isn't a Q3 appearance like I was hoping. I think the pace was probably there. I just didn't start the lap very well there. So we miss out by half a tenth. And uh, that is it. Probably the perfect starting position, in all honesty, for this Italian Grand Prix. We can start on whatever tyres we want. Um, given that we, you know, if we would have made it through to Q3, I don't know how much of an impact we would have made anyway. Um, and we would have been locked onto starting on the super soft tyre. So, you know, 11th place, it's probably going to be a blessing in disguise. And um, with some, you know, grid penalties potentially for the AI, we're getting into the realms now in the second half of the season where there could be a lot of engine or gearbox penalties. We could find ourselves, you know, in the top five, hopefully. Um, that's that's certainly what I'm hoping for. We've got some resource points as well, 350 just about. So maybe at the end of this episode or at the start of the next one, we could potentially look at some more downforce upgrades for the next episode after that. So that's been qualifying. Time for the race now, for the Italian Grand Prix. Thank you very much, Jeff. Welcome, guys, to the Italian Grand Prix. Hopefully, uh, we're going to have a really good race on our hands. We started from a lot worse in the previous episode, and you guys know what happened in that one. So, fingers crossed in this one, where I think we might have even more pace, um, another good result could be looming in this Grand Prix. However, we don't have the weather on our side in this one. Um, it's ultimately going to be down to us to get the job done on our own. So, really, it's just down to us to absolutely smash through the field and do the best job we can um, with the car that we have under us. I think in the speed traps we were doing pretty decently. I think around the top 10 we were um, there or thereabouts with the Mercedes cars, especially uh, with our lower downforce that we were running for this track. So overtaking shouldn't be too difficult for us um, so long as we can hold on to the cars in the middle sector. Um, that's going to be the aim for this race. But here we go. Ready for the start of the Italian Grand Prix. Five red lights and we are underway. For Monza, a very long run into Turn 1, so a good start is critical. I think it was pretty nice, though. Uh, better than Esteban Ocon, that's for sure. Perez off to a flyer. He might go up the inside of a couple cars into Turn 1. He doesn't take that opportunity, so we are going to squeeze past him if we can. Uh, looks like it's going to be three wide for the three of us as we get a bit of a touch-up from Perez. There was a car on his inside as well, so I can't really lay too much blame on him as um, he had to leave that guy on the inside, a bit of space as well. I believe it was Felipe Massa, but as you can see there, Rich Revs, Slipstream, and uh, we fly past. Well, not really fly past, but at least we can contest with a Mercedes-powered Force India, and that is us up in a seventh place. So, nice start so far in this uh, Italian Grand Prix. Four spots made already, and the first lap isn't even over yet. So, yeah, let's see what we can do from here. Settle into the race. Hopefully, we can catch up to the next group of cars. Verstappen is at the, uh, the trail, or the tail end of that queue. Um... So, yeah, we'll see what we can do. That Red Bull is definitely not going to be the fastest in a straight line. We dive him up the inside into the first chicane. Again, a bit of a touch through the second part of that chicane. So the AI, uh, a little bit greedy when it comes to track space um, on the exit of that corner. But 
Um, we got the move done in the end. Uh, a little bit of contact, but thankfully no damage for us. Uh, Verstappen was also under pressure from the cars behind. And I think he's lost a spot to Perez in the process. So not a great start for Verstappen. Next up is Hamilton, who is uh, down the order a little bit, it must be said, given his car. The Mercedes was absolutely dominant around this track in real life. Uh, they're not enjoying the same uh, luxuries today. But as you can see here, a few laps into the Grand Prix. I think Kimi Raikkonen leads. Sebastian Vettel in second. We've got Roman Grosjean in third. I Honestly, I don't know how he's managed to do that, but he's there. And um, he's doing an absolute, I don't know, road to glory, park in the bus style kind of drive from him so far. I don't know how he's so far at the grid, but he's he's pulling it off. The Haas is only marginally better than the McLaren Honda, so... You know, full credit to him. But uh, either way, you can see this is Grosjean going for a move on Sebastian Vettel into turn one. And this is going to be a move for second place if you can get the move done around the outside. Doesn't quite have the, the traction to do so and has to so settle into third place. So, yeah, Grosjean is doing an absolute number for me. He's uh, holding up these guys, an absolute treat. He's actually got to the lead of that group. Vettel is now under pressure from Perez, who now gets involved in the action. And Perez is now in third place. So we have Raikkonen. Grosjean and Perez, the top three. And it's absolutely mad scenes. We have a yellow flag on the start finish straight as well. Not too sure who that was for. It is Jolie and Palmer out of the Grand Prix. We could potentially see a virtual safety car or something like that, but unfortunately, uh, nothing really materialized. So we carry on to the next up. This is Vettel in the slipstream. He's been overtaken. Uh, Grosjean has been overtaken by Perez, and now Vettel gets some revenge up the inside, and that should be moved on. He might have got Perez as well. Uh, but not quite on the uh, soft compound tyres. He has to settle into fourth place. So, yeah, the more that these guys battle, the more it invites me into the battle and it allows me to you know, catch up to this train, get the slipstream, get DRS. I can save a little bit of fuel as well, but I'm not entirely interested in that at this stage. Now that Grosjean has fallen to the back of that queue, we want to get in front of him as soon as we can and uh, get that move done, which we do into fourth place. Uh, we actually got Perez as well. We dived him too, and uh, unfortunately didn't get a good exit off of the parabolic curve, and uh, we lose that spot again to Perez. So, yeah, from here, nine laps in. We're a, quarter, a third of the way into the race now, and um, been settling in quite nicely. After that, didn't quite have the pace to match Perez. He was starting to, you know, edge away ever so slightly, but I don't know if he would have entirely broken out of, out of uh, DRS range. That's what I was uh, trying to prevent, but we carry on. Uh, one lap extra to lap 10. We're going to pit in and fit on the medium compound tyres. I know the race strategy said softs for the rest of this Grand Prix, but at the last second, I, I just got a little bit worried about tyre wear, and I just decided to switch to the mediums because I saw guys on the previous lap switch to mediums as well. Um, maybe in hindsight, the soft compound tyres might be a better choice. They might easily make it to the end, but I don't know. I just wanted to play it safe. I just wanted to make it to the end of the Grand Prix, and hopefully um, this strategy call doesn't bite me in the buttocks. That's a weird, that, that doesn't sound right. I never say that word. I don't know why I've chosen that word out of all the pronunciations of that word. But uh, either way, uh, lap 12, we can see more uh, of the midfield runners, guys who started on the softs, for example, starting to make their stops. We get back into the top 10. We're effective P5, I think it is. Um, once all the pit stops shake out, this is Grosjean um, on the attack on his medium tyres. Yeah, like I said, uh, everyone else is pretty much on the mediums as well, so... In theory, we won't lose out too much, but if we have the soft compound size on, I think we could defend a little bit better and maybe even make some inroads towards uh, Perez in the second half of the Grand Prix. Here goes Grosjean up the inside. That's not what we want. The more the Grosjean does that, uh, the, the more it's going to hamper our progress in getting through the field. Now, this is uh, Felipe Massa, who recently came out of the pits, and he's gone for the soft compound strategy, and uh, he's making his way through the field now and has overtaken um, Grosjean. So... It's going to be interesting to see what kind of progress Massa can make because that, in theory, could have been us um, if we stuck to, to our guns there uh, and what Jeff gave us. But as you can see there, they're battling quite away quite a bit. Um, the Red Bull is now getting involved as well, and that's allowed me to break away from those guys because they're all squabbling quite a bit. This is uh, Daniel Ricciardo uh, weaving left and right, trying to find a, find a way around, and um, in the end, decided to back out of it. wasn't wasn't quite worth it, but... For us, though, we're just absolutely marching on here, trying to build a margin to Romain Grosjean behind and the Force Indias. It's uh, not really working out. The Force India is absolutely beastly in a straight line. And um, as we come on to 21, a few laps later, we now find Daniel Ricciardo getting in front of him. And now he's finding a way around the outside of us into sixth place. Um, great move by Ricciardo. It must be said he's on the fresh and medium tyres. 
and uh, he absolutely waltzes around the outside of us um, with, uh, well, much better you know, downforce that, re that Red Bull produces. I just didn't get a nice run through that middle sector there, and Ricardo didn't need a second invitation there. So we'll see if we can get it back here on this start-finish straight. We know the Red Bull has a weakness in a straight line. Let's try and exploit that with Rich Rev, Slipstream, DRS. We're running quite dangerously low on fuel. We won't make it to the end of this stage, but um, as long as we can get back in front of Ricardo, um, get to the middle sector, we'll start saving fuel again and see um, if we can make it to the end of the race in this position. At the same time, I'm just trying to, you know, hold on to my track position. I'm running in standard revs now on the straights. It's getting a bit dire now. Five laps to go, and I'm just having to, you know, save fuel at every opportunity. I can't run rich revs anymore unless I'm going for an overtake or unless I'm really having to defend uh, a position that I know I'm going to lose. So, yeah, it's, it's getting pretty dire now to the fact that we're starting to lift and coast in this Grand Prix, you know, running higher gears through certain corners, you know, lifting off into braking zones. All these elements we've learned in Friday practice sessions are starting to come uh, into effect now in this race, and we're just desperately trying to, to get that fuel back in check. Ricardo flies back past us. That's P6 for him, and I think that might be the end of that battle. I think I have to concede. Uh, we're just too far vulnerable in terms of our fuel that I just had to let him go. Uh, I, have to, I have to say fuel. Uh, otherwise, we're not going to make it. So, three laps to go. We'll consolidate seventh place if we can. Ricardo actually had a really bad uh, lap this time around on lap 24. And um, we tried to set up a really nice overtake, possibly, on the exit of Parabolica. But I just got oversteer in the dirty air. The car just was not stable at all, especially in the rear end. It was really lacking there. And Ricardo got away. So, yeah, that was uh, the last time we saw Daniel Ricardo in this race. And now we've got to focus on Esteban Ocon now. As you can see, standard revs. I can't afford to run rich revs anymore. I really need to start saving fuel. So, watch as we head into this braking zone now. I completely lift off about 100 meters before the braking zone. And uh, I shift down a little bit slower. You'll see this again. Lifting off two seconds later. Braking. And um, we recover quite a bit of fuel by doing that. So, if we can just you know keep this up, we might be able to run rich revs. Um, on the crucial straights on the last lap. That's kind of what I'm building up a, a bank for. And now we're going to use it now as we head on to the final lap of this Italian Grand Prix. Hasn't really worked out in the way that I wanted it to. Was hoping for a top five, but still, I will take seventh place and six points if I can. Into turn one, really late under brakes. Possibly too late as I tried to do the lift and coasting thing again. Left my braking marker way too late and uh, almost got myself into trouble. Now you can see... Roman Grosjean getting involved with Ocon as we head into the middle sector. Those guys squabbling kind of allows me to get about a second's margin over those guys and really allowed me to save fuel for the second half of that lap and basically um, let me off the hook. So we were able to make it to the finish. It's going to be seventh place in this Italian Grand Prix. Six points. I'll take it. Great drive, great drive. We're really happy with that performance. So here they come now out onto the podium. Wherever you go, anywhere in the world, the prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands and they're out in force again today. It's Ferrari on the top step once more. So there we go. That has been the Italian Grand Prix. I don't know about you guys, but the race itself just went by in a flash. It's one of the quickest Grand Prix um, on the calendar and it certainly felt like that. Um, you know, as soon as I made the first pit stop, the second half of that race just flew by. So Kimi Raikkonen wins the Grand Prix. I think Lewis was second. Uh, Vettel in third. So the Tifosi are going to have something to cheer about. Both the Ferraris in the end getting on the podium. And Raikkonen um, with a, a really solid drive there today. Uh, was pretty much unchallenged after the starts. You know, everyone was squabbling over second place backwards. And um, for me, I, think, I feel like the race kind of went downhill when I switched onto the mediums. Maybe I stayed out a little bit too long as well. But uh, yeah, I could have made a little bit more inroads and maybe with some more downforce, maybe I went a little bit too skinny. I could have been a little bit more aggressive in that race and kind of, you when know, I would have got the most out of the car. It would have been a maybe more balanced package. But in the end, it's still seventh place, six points. You know, we're in a lot better position uh, this season than where we were last season. I think, I can't remember what happened last season, but um, this track was almost a complete write-off for us. But hey, I'll take it. Um, we're still fourth in the constructors from McLaren. Um, and I think we're still sixth in the drivers. So overall, we're still you know, holding on to our positions in the championship. We're still grinding away with the resource points. So I think we should be in a position to upgrade uh, again in the next episode. So look forward to that. We have the Singapore Grand Prix coming up as well. 
So I'm really looking forward to that. It should really suit the McLaren car and hopefully we can come away with a really good result. It's a very similar track to Monaco and we can afford to run really heavy downforce there as well. So um, overall, I think we might have a really good package there. But either way, um, after that event, we had this uh, invitational event in the classic McLaren, the 2008 one. And uh, this is a China. I don't really cover these um, events all too much because they're not really that interesting in all honesty. But the goal was just to um, complete three laps, I think it was, in under five minutes. And as you can see, coming through the penultimate corner, we might just about complete this challenge and um, get some more, I don't know, points for the career mode score. In all honesty, I would like to see us get rewarded for these game modes by getting some extra resource points. I know career, more, career mode score helps a little bit, but I don't really care about career mode score. So it would be nice if there was a little extra benefactor in there to you know, motivate me to do those invitational events apart from like the um, core competencies. Like you can get faster upgrades by doing these events, but you have to do like 20 or so to unlock the third level, which I think we're aiming for now. But uh, we move on to the Singapore Grand Prix now. We uh, got the front downforce upgrade that we were after at the start of this episode. So now with that increased front downforce, we should be a little bit more competitive at this race. And now we've basically drawn alongside with Haas like we did at the start of the last episode. So yeah, really looking forward to the next race. Hopefully you guys can join me for it. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. to see plenty more F1 2017 videos. My voice is almost gone. Been commentating for over 20 minutes now, um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, again, with the, the power units, it's going to be really close in terms of actually making these things last because the durability still is not there. So if we are going to get to the end of the season on the current you know, amounts of power units, we're only just going to scrape through. We may have to take a, a grid penalty at some point to take a fresher engine to be more competitive, but... Um, We'll wait and see how that goes. But that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next race, the Singapore Grand Prix. I'll see you guys next time.